boy, new car parts. This is the last part I was waiting for to do dynoing. So we're gonna go to the dyno this weekend. The RS is looking the best it ever has. Look at that engine bay. Except that blue hose, that thing is driving me nuts. Oh, and this air box, which leads me to this box. Let's unbox this bad boy. Oh boy. So, as you guys know, you've been following along, the turbo was killed because of an air filter failure. So, I got an SPT intake. Generally, I don't run these on cars because they're kind of hot air intakes, but given the situation and how my car is set up, I've got some hood venting that will help. Sweet, comes with instructions. Instructions are always good. So what I wanna do is set the car up to have a short ram to run efficiently. I really like the design of the SPT intake because it comes with a mounting tab, fits up in the engine bay really nice. It's even got the little mounts for the hoses inside the engine bay, so it keeps everything nice, clean, and tidy. And because this is actually a genuine Subaru part, it comes with a filter that you can buy replacements through Subaru. So I really like the fact that you can just go to the Subaru dealership, give them a part number, and they'll send you a new filter or they might even have one at the dealership, which is really cool. Let's uh, let's get this in the car. prep to get this thing ready for the tune today. Since we're switching to Cobb, I'm going back to the MAF. It was previously on speed density and I was using a MAF extension plug, but I can't find the other half of this that I depinned. I was planning on just repinning everything, running it into here and cleaning it up. But for now, what I did is I depinned the extension plug and then I'm just going to pin them in, tape them up, just temporary to get the tune done today. And the reason for this is I'm using an AEM intake temperature sensor. It's just a little eight NPT sensor that threads into the actual manifold. And Subaru is typically, it's inside your actual MAF, which is fine for like a street car, you know, take it to work, your mom's car. But what we wanna know is the temperature coming out of the inner cooler and into your manifold. What that's gonna help us do is when I'm on track and we're pushing the car really, really hard, if the ECU sees high intake temperature sensors, we can actually take timing out of the car. Next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually switch out ECUs. So this is the ECU my car is running on currently. It is a 0 02 to 03 WRX. And the O2 to O3 WRX ECUs are the only ones that can support Carberry. So if I ever wanna mess around with speed density again, I need this ECU. And if we install the cob onto that ECU, I can't do anything with it. So, so what I plan to do is install my O5 WRX ECU because you can't use speed density. We'll marry the cob to that ECU. That way these two are ready to go for when we show up to the dyno because I won't be able to drive to the dyno on Cobb because the injector scaling is all wrong. It, the car will run like absolute crap when we put this in. So we'll drive to the dyno with the speed density tune on this ECU. When we get there, we'll swap it out for this ECU that will be already married to the cob, which we'll do in a second. We've got our cob all plugged in, put the black facing on there because black on black is pretty sweet. I don't need the blue connector. This car is already hardwired for that, so I don't need to do all that and go underneath the car. This car actually installed a switch for the little green connectors below so I don't have to climb underneath the car again. Let's go ahead, install this bad boy, swap that ECU in, and then we can drive to the dyno. And there we go. We are officially on Cobb.
Abby for a 20 minute deal. sensitive to changes. 10% of wastegate duty and it made that much power. That means we've got... We don't want to run that much boost, right? So that's probably yeah. like the highest boost. So yeah, what was, we, what we was the boost pressure? Range to work with. How much boost? That was, that was 22 to 23 PSI. Okay. So, which maybe it's going to be fine, but I think we'll run out of fuel. I, we just are working with an overly sensitive boost control setup. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna drop that in half and see what they, see what happens. that's a sign that it's opening and closing it's right at that threshold uh -huh. we're gonna hopefully run more boost and then uh, so it should stay Running on fuel up top. 
more fuel if we get no change than what's, we are. So what's the duty cycle then? I don't know. I, should, I forgot to log in. Does it say what was boost on that last run? Uh, 17, 18. Oh, really? Yeah. So, <laughs> so this turbo could probably do 400? Yeah. Holy shit. Yes. I can already feel myself getting greedy. <laughs> It's so easy. Yep. Oh, you see the boost up where it picked up the power? Because I added boost up top only. Up where the yellow line is. Up yeah. there? See oh. the yellow line jump? That's uh -huh. the extra boost I gave it. Huh. I'm just gonna go. So, every time we're adding, it's actually picking up significantly. Yeah, it's still like a little bit of boost. It's It made more power. So, I mean, this turbo is it's right in that efficiency range, I believe. Like, gotcha. it's not. Usually if you get towards the end, you could add another pound or two and it like doesn't make hardly any difference. Yeah. This one, it's it's pretty noticeable still. Huh. That's 20 horsepower with an extra like pound and a half. Yeah. So is it safer to run more boost, less timing? On E85, on pump gas, maybe that could mildly be true. Mm -hmm. E85 is not very knock. It's not easy to make yeah. E85 knock, so I generally run more timing with E85. Not, it hasn't picked up hardly any knock. Is your knock sensor working? It should be. Might be running out of fuel. This is where it matters. All right, we should be good. We gotta do one run, make sure it's gonna be making the numbers we want, and we should be good to go. Awesome job if you guys need any work in the Midwest come to ASM because stuff gets done around here and it goes fast now it's actually making too much power and I ran into issues the first track day I went out I meant to film it all but I've just been really busy and life has just been life lately and so let me walk through what we got to do to make it to the next track day. I'm really not going to show you guys a bunch, but I just kind of wanted to end the video and give you an update that this car rips. I'll do a draggy run in 
a bunch of other stuff and some more videos to come so you guys will definitely see it in action don't worry so i've got a bunch of new mounts and the reason for that is uh yeah things weren't playing nicely so first track day out two runs in literally just coolant everywhere and i'm like oh god i already blew the car up what I believe happened is the mounts that are on this engine are old, tired. The transmission mount is original, 150K on that. And the engine is moving so much when it's under load and in power that the power steering pulley actually ate a hole into the upper radiator hose. So got a new one on there, but just gonna go ahead. I picked up some group N mounts. I was gonna go with IEG because I've used as you guys have seen in the past videos, IEG Pan, and their quality is pretty great. But for the price of getting OEM mounts for the trans and the engine, I couldn't even buy just the engine mounts. So I chose to go with OEM because you can't really beat OEM, especially if it's an upgrade from what you have. I'm gonna go ahead and toss those in. I'm not gonna show you it, it's not exciting. It's just a couple bolts and you toss them in and it's done. But uh, as far as the tune went, uh, I don't know how much I really was able to show you guys. We had set the wastegate up, um, or I set the wastegate up, and he had nothing to do with that. I set it up to have the, I don't know, I'll just throw a diagram up on the screen here. I used a different option than I normally would. I was trying to make the wastegate sound like nice and smooth where it wasn't fluttering, and you could kind of tell in the videos where we had done a couple pulls and you couldn't really hear the wastegate, but then once we hooked the hoses up just to the top of the gate, I don't know, I forget how I actually hook it up. I'll just, again, toss the thing up on the screen here. I always forget how to hook them up. But now it gets that signature fluttery sound and the car runs great. Definitely have to do another tune. Uh, I wanna do a 91 tune because I wanna maybe do a road trip with this car this year kind of throwing that around if you guys have seen my $500 Forester video I think it'd be really cool to take this modified car across the country or do something with it I don't know kind of rambling on here but I hope you guys enjoyed it there is definitely more to come hopefully I get back into doing videos life has just kind of been crappy lately be patient I have a bunch of stuff to do with the Z there's like literally a pile of parts at my house so Hopefully I can do that. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Uh, do all the things. We'll see you guys next time.